This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Warlord of Kor by Terry Carr Chapter 9 Mara's frown deepened. She looked around them in the dimness, her eyes taking in the complexity and extent of the circuitry. It faded into the darkness behind them. Lines ran into walls and floor. They built their computers in the grand manner, didn't they? She said softly. I've seen fragments of them before, Ray Anson said. This is a big one. No telling how much area the total complex takes up. One thing's certain, though. It's no ordinary computer of theirs. Not for plain math work. Nor even for specialized computations. Like the one on Rigel II. That was apparently used for astrogation, but it wasn't half the size of this. And navigation between stars, even with the kind of drive they must have had, is no simple problem. The Herlogy think it's a god, she said. That raised another problem, Ryanson mused. The outsiders built it, and must have left it here when they pulled back to wherever they were going, if they ever left the planet. But the Herlogy use it and they communicate with it verbally. The Herlogy are apparently responsible for keeping it protected since then. But why should the Herlogy be able to use it? Unless they're outsiders after all, said Mara. Ryanson frowned. No, I'm still not convinced of that. The clue seems to be that they communicate verbally with it. They must have been using it since before they developed telepathy. Couldn't there have been direct contact between the Herlogy and the Outsiders back when the Herlogy were just evolving out of the Beast stage? There must have been, said Ryanson. The temple rituals are conducted in an even older form of their language than most remembered, a proto-language that was kept alive only by the priest caste, because the machine had been set to respond to that language. But aren't primitive languages usually composed of simple, basic words and concepts? How well could they communicate in such a language? Not very well, Ray Anson said, which would explain why the machine seemed to make mistakes, clumsiness of language. So the outsiders, maybe, left the machine when they pulled out, but they set it to respond to the Herlogy language because our horse-faced friends were beginning to build a civilization of their own, and the outsiders thought they'd leave them some guidance. He stopped for a moment, remembering that first linkage with Horong and Tebron's memories. The Herlogy called them the Old Ones, he said. And that order to Tebron about the other race that they would meet some day, that was based on outsider observations. I wonder when the outsiders were on Earth, Ray Anson said. Sometime after we'd started our own rise, certainly maybe in ancient Mesopotamia or India, or later during the Renaissance. The time doesn't matter, does it? Myra said. They touched down on Earth, took note of us, and left. Somehow they thought we were going to develop more rapidly than we did. Probably before the Dark Ages, Ranson said. Maybe they didn't see that thousand-year setback coming. He stopped and stood up in the low passageway among the ancient circuitry. So here we are, second-guessing the outsiders, and outside, their protégés have disintegrators probably left by the outsiders, and they're just waiting for us to try to get out. Our newfound knowledge isn't doing us much good, is it? she said. He shook his head slowly. When I was still on the secondary sense teach units, I met René Malholm for the first time. My father worked the spacers. So I don't even remember what planet this was on. But I remember the night I first saw René. He was speaking from the top of a blue lumber pile, shouting about the corporations that were moving in. He was getting all worked up about something, and several people in the crowd were shouting back at him. I stopped to watch. All of a sudden, six or seven men moved in from somewhere and dragged him down from where he was standing. There was a fight. People were thrown all around. I hid till it was over. When the crowd finally cleared, there was Rennie. His clothes were torn, but he wasn't hurt. 
Every one of the men who attacked him had to be carried away. I think one of them was dead. Rene stood there laughing. Then he saw me hidden in the darkness, and he took me home. He told me that when he'd been younger, he'd worked his way all the way into Earth and studied some of the cultures there. He learned karate, which was an ancient Japanese way of fighting. Rance and took a deep breath. He said, everything a person learns will be useful someday, and I believed him. A nice parable, Mara said. We could use him against the Herlogy, though. Ranson was silent, thinking. If they could only catch the aliens off guard. But of course they couldn't now. He let his eyes wander aimlessly among the circuitry surrounding them. Tell me, old Cor, what do we do now? After a moment, his eyes narrowed. He reached up and traced a connection with his fingers, back to the front toward the altar. It led directly to the speaker, the voice of Cor. And if he could interrupt that connection, put his own voice through the speaker and out through the altar. Mara, we're going out. I found my own brand of karate for our friends out there. He helped her to her feet. She moved somewhat painfully, her broken left arm hanging stiffly at her side, but she made no protest. We've got to be fast. I don't know how well this will work. Depends how much they trust their clay-footed god today. Quickly he outlined his plan. Mara listened silently and nodded. Then he set to work. It was largely guesswork following those intricate alien connections, but Ranson had seen this part of such machines before. He found the penultimate point at which the impulses from the brain were translated into sound and broadcast through the speaker. He disconnected this, his torn fingers working awkwardly on the delicate linkages. Ready? Mara was just inside the narrow passage behind the altar. She nodded quickly. Ranson twisted himself so that he could speak directly into the input of the speaker. He raised his voice to approximate the thin, high sounds of the Herlogy language. Remain motionless. Remain motionless. Remain motionless. The command burst out upon the altar room of the temple, shattering the silence. The Herlogy turned in surprise to the altar and stood still. <laughs> Remain motionless. Remain motionless. It was the phrase he had heard the machine use so often to Tebron, king priest leader of all Herlogy. It had meant something else then, but the proto language of the Herlogy had no precise meanings. Given by itself, it seemed to mean precisely what it said. All right, let's go out, Ranson said, and the two of them broke from behind the altar. The Herlogy stood completely still. Several of those that Ranson had dropped with his stunner had recovered consciousness, but they made no move either. Ranson and the girl ran right through the quiet aliens. Only a few of them turned shadowed eyes to look at them as they passed. They made the outside colonnade in safety and paused there. They may see through this in a minute, Ranson said. Don't wait for me. Get out of the city. You are not coming? I won't be far behind. Get going. She hesitated only a moment, then hurried down the broad levels of the temple steps. Rance and watched her to the bottom, then turned and re-entered the altar room. Rance and went quickly among them, taking their weapons. Most of them made no effort to stop him, but a few tightened their grips on their disintegrators, and he had to pry those thick fingers from the weapons, cursing to himself. How long would they wait? There were fourteen of the disintegrators. They were large and heavy. He couldn't hold all of them at once. He dumped five of them outside the altar room and returned to disarm the rest of the aliens. Sweat formed beads on his forehead, but he moved without hesitation. Another of the Herlogy tightened his grip when Ranson began to take the weapon from him. He looked up and saw the quiet eyes of her own resting on him. 
The leathery gray wrinkles which surrounded those eyes quivered slightly, but otherwise he made no movement. Ryanson dropped his gaze from that contact and rested the weapon away. As he started to move on to the next, Harung silently dipped his massive head to one side. Ryanson felt a chill go down his back. In a few more minutes he had to disarm them all. He set the last three disintegrators on the stone floor of the colonnade, and a movement in the distance caught his eye. It was on the south wall of the city. Two men stood for a moment, silhouetted against the flat, then disappeared into the shadows. In a moment, another man appeared, and he drew dropped inside the wall. So Manning had already sent the men in. The mob was unleashed. Ranson hesitated for a moment then turned and went quickly back into the altar room. Mara's radio was there. He lifted it by its strap and took it with him out to the colonnade. He could see the earthmen moving through the streets now, darting from wall to wall in the gathering darkness of the evening. In short time it would be full night, and Ryanson knew that these men would like nothing better than to attack in the dark. He warmed the radio and opened the transmitter. Manning, call off your dogs. I've disarmed the herlogy. The radio spat static at him, and for several seconds he thought his signal hadn't even been picked up. But at last there was a reply. Then get out of the temple. It's too late to stop this. Manning, I said get clear. You've done all you can here. Damn it, there's no need for any fighting. Manning's voice sounded cold, even in the faint reception of the hand radio. That's for me to decide. I'm running this show, remember? You're running a massacre, Ranson shouted. Call it what you like. Myra says they weren't so docile when you broke in. Ranson's mind raced. He had to stall for time. If he could get Manning to stop those men until they cooled down. Manning, there's no need for this. Didn't she tell you that the altar is just a computer? These people haven't had anything to do with the outsiders since before they can remember. The radio carried the faint sound of Manning's chuckle. So now they're people to you, Lee? Or are you one of them now? What the hell are you talking about? Lee, my boy, you're sounding like an old horse-faced nursemaid. You link minds with them and you say that you were practically a herlogy yourself when you went into that linkage. Well, I'm not so sure you ever came out of it. You're still one of them. Is that the only reason you can think of that I might have for wanting to prevent a massacre? Ryanson said icily. If they tried to revolt once, they'll try it again, Manning said. We'll crush them now. You think that will impress the council? slaughtering the only intelligent race we found? I'm not playing to the council, Manning snapped. I've got these men following me, and I'll listen to what they want. Ranson stared at the microphone for a minute. Are you sure you aren't afraid of your own mob, he said? We're coming in, Lee. Get out of there or we'll cut you down, too. Manning! I'm switching off. Not quite yet. There's one more thing, and you'd better hear this one. Make it fast, Manning said. His voice sounded uninterested. If any of your boys try to come in, I'll stop them myself. I've got the disintegrators, and I'll use them. There was silence from the radio. Stay for the static. It lasted for long seconds. Then, it's your funeral. There was a faint click as Manning switched off. Ranson stared angrily at the radio set for a moment, then left it lying on the top of the steps and went back inside. The herlogy stood motionless in the dimness. It took a while for Ranson's eyes to adjust to it. He found the interpreter that Myra had left and quickly hooked it up to Hurung. The alien's eyes, moving heavily in their sockets, watched him as he connected the wires. When everything was ready, Ranson lifted the interpreter's mic. The Earthmen are going to attack you, he said. I want to help you fight them off. There was no reaction from the alien, only those quiet eyes resting on him 
like the shadows of the entire past. Can you still believe that Kor is a god? That's only a machine. I spoke through it myself minutes ago. Don't you realize that? After a moment, Harung's eyes slowly closed and opened in acknowledgement. Kor was god knowledge. The old ones died before time and passed into Kor. Now Kor is dead. And all of you will be dead too, Ryanson said. The huge alien sat unmoving. His eyes turned away from Ryanson. You've got to fight them, Ryanson said. But he could see that it was useless. Harong had made no reply, but Ryanson knew what was in his thoughts now. There is no purpose. End of chapter 9